showing you how you can build your own cuprous oxide solar panel. But just as a quick disclaimer, it does not produce a lot of electricity. When I tried it, it produced maybe 100 millivolts at most. And this is because the electrons in cuprous oxide don't use as much visible light to jump band gaps to conductive energy levels. They use more ultraviolet. And I'm going to quickly show you the absorption spectrum for cuprous oxide so you can just get a better understanding of how light affects solar panels. And before I set up the solar panel, I'm also going to explain the circuit I made. All right, so let's get into it. Okay guys, so I'm going to quickly go over what a band gap is. What this band gap is, is a difference in energy between the conductive state and the valence state between electrons in the atoms of cuprous oxide. So Cu2O is cuprous oxide and that is the red stuff that we get on the side of the copper when it is oxidized and as you can see it has a band gap of around 2.1 so electrons in cuprous oxide are at this crossroad where they can either be valence electrons or they can be conductive electrons and as soon as they are hit by photons and they bump up to the conductive state. And this is why they don't do so good in visible light. It does better at being conductive when it absorbs ultraviolet light because the energy required to jump energy levels so that they become conductive is actually at this peak here in the around 280 wavelength, which is in the ultraviolet range. So it is highly crappy outside. It is winter here in Maryland. And as you can see on this graph that I found on Google, we don't get a lot of sunlight during the winter. So I will be using this moderately powerful LED lamp to be powering my solar panel. Okay, so it's been about 35 minutes, so I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes. I'm going to turn the stove off. So here's the cool part. I just pulled this off the burner and this black stuff is coming off very easily. I'm going to very carefully wipe some of this stuff off. Okay, so in this circuit, the photons are going to hit this cuprous oxide and that is going to energize the electrons to the point that they jump the band gap and become conductive, then they are able to jump to the solution, and then they flow from the NaCl solution to this other copper plate, then they travel back up this wire and back over to the cuprous oxide plate. Okay, so this is the setup here. I got my lamp, which I'm going to be moving around. <laughs> it is not in the right position right now, but. So I'm picking up about 60 millivolts. Um, that's next to nothing, but as I move the light closer, there's a jump. It goes to about 86, 87. Now it's up to about 100. The farther I move it away, the lower my voltage is. Well, that is it for this video. But stay tuned guys, I should have my brushless DC motor up pretty soon. 
probably within the week as soon as I can get my code right for that thing. It's been a massive pain in the tookish. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys.